Today, we'll overview the FTCE Elementary Education K-6 exam, specifically Subtest 3, Science. Together, we'll discuss three things, what content will be covered on the test and how to study for it, the most likely concepts or themes you'll see on the exam, and we're gonna end with a few practice questions. For our full study guide, click the link right here or the one in the description. More information about that at the end of this video. We're starting off with competency one, effective science instruction. This skill is all about managing a science class, including learning styles, equipment, responsible class content, and more. Now, we don't normally do this, but competency one leads perfectly into competency two, the nature of science. This competency dives into the dynamic nature of science models, laws, mechanisms, and theories that explain natural phenomena, as well as scientific thinking and the interdisciplinary aspects of science. These competencies are the support beams of our factory. Without them, everything would collapse. For this section, we'll discuss a vital concept that applies directly to both of these competencies, the scientific method. Okay, so what is that? The scientific method is defined as the steps used to ensure high quality scientific research. It involves using deliberate steps to solve a problem while gathering data to research a conclusion. The scientific method is used to guide scientists through the steps of planning the process of conducting the experiment. We'll take a look at those steps in a moment, but first, it's important to remember that the scientific method is not a linear path. After forming a conclusion, a new or revised hypothesis might be formed, sparking a new experiment. Got that? Okay, let's look at those steps. Number one, the scientist identifies the problem and attempts to explain it. Number two, the scientist makes observations, recording information gathered using the five senses. Number three, the scientist forms a hypothesis or a testable prediction based on the observations. Number four, the scientist tests the hypothesis in an investigation or an experiment. In an experiment, the scientist will have a control group or a group that does not receive the experimental treatment and an experimental group, a group that does. Number five, the scientist records and communicates their data their measurements and their observations taken during the experiment. Number six, the scientist draws a conclusion stating whether the hypothesis was supported or rejected. Number seven, the scientist reforms the hypothesis and designs a new experiment. Students should understand that following the scientific method often results in a feedback loop, where the results lead to a more possible hypotheses and continued testing. Remember, the goal of a science teacher is to provide a learning environment designed to encourage opportunities for hands-on experiments that lead students through the process of the scientific method. Wow, two competencies down already. Let's move on to competency three, physical sciences. Here you'll be tested on the physical properties of matter, forms and transformations of energy, homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures, and more. One important distinction here is atoms versus molecules. So let's define these terms. Atoms are the smallest particle of an element. Each type of atom is also known as an element. Molecules, on the other hand, are electrically neutral particles made of two or more atoms joined together by a molecular bond. For example, water, or H2O, is a molecule. In water, two hydrogen atoms form a molecular bond with an oxygen atom. Let's take it a step further with atomic bonds. Let's look at the differences between ionic bonds and molecular bonds. In an ionic bond, electrons are removed from one atom and given to an atom of another element. The two particles have opposite charges and attract each other by the electromagnetic force, which bonds the two particles together. Molecular bonds are sometimes called covalent bonds. Electrons are shared between atoms. Another competency down. Next up, competency four, Earth and space. As the name suggests, this one's all about the Earth, think geologic formations, rocks, and soil, 
and space. Think the Sun, Earth, Moon system, our solar system, and more. Compared to the last competency, this one seems like the factory building itself. Huge. Luckily, you and I are going to focus more on the Earth side of this skill, with constructive and destructive processes. These processes shape the Earth. They can happen slowly over millions of years, or they can occur rapidly. Constructive and destructive surface processes are defined with relation to the continental land. So constructive processes create. Some examples include volcanoes, deposition, and mountain building. Destructive processes destroy. Examples of this are weathering and erosion. Let's use tectonic plates as an example. Tectonic plates are always interacting with the edges of the adjacent tectonic plates. At these boundaries, there are three possible movements, constructive, destructive, and neither. At a convergent boundary, two plates move toward each other. As they come together, some of the crust is forced back into the mantle. This is a destructive boundary. At a divergent boundary, two pieces of crust move away from one another. Molten rock upwells from the mantle and cools to form a new crust. This is a constructive boundary. At a transform boundary, two plates slide past one another in opposite directions, and the earth around the boundary is crumpled. A transform boundary neither adds nor removes crust, so neither constructive nor destructive. Congratulations, we're almost done. We've reached our final skill, Competency 5, Life Science. Here, you'll be tested on the characteristics, classifications, and analysis of living and non-living things. In other words, the factory workers, janitors, CEOs, security guards, and more. Speaking of hard workers, let's talk about the building blocks of living things. Cells. All cells are composed of many smaller structures that perform specific jobs. Organelles are membrane-bound structures within a eukaryotic cell. You can think of them as little organs, hence the name organelles, for the cell. Some other cellular structures are not membrane-bound, such as ribosomes, but they still perform distinct jobs within the cell. Take a look at this generic plant and animal cell with all the organelles labeled. Each organelle is kind of like, well, the parts of a factory. We know all about that, right? For example, the nucleus is the CEO's office. This organelle stores and protects DNA and regulates cellular activity by turning genes on and off. Meanwhile, the cytoplasm is the factory floor, encompassing all the things within the cell other than the nucleus. And the mitochondria is the powerhouse, creating energy from glucose to run the factory. How cool is that? As you just saw, plant and animal cells share many organelles, but a few differ. Plant cells can have chloroplasts, cell walls, and a large central vacuole. Animal cells can have centrioles and lysosomes. And that's the end of our last competency. You're not done yet though. Let's test what you've learned. Let's go way back to the scientific method for this first question. Which of the following is not a valid part of a scientific investigation? Remember those seven steps we talked about earlier? Three of these responses were mentioned then, but one sneaky answer was not. And that answer is... B. Outliers and unexpected data can provide insights into what is really happening and should not be eliminated, but can be noted. Next question. Which are the smallest particles of an element? Remember what we talked about in our third competency? That should lead you to the correct answer, which is... Answer D. Atoms are the smallest particles of an element. If broken into protons, neutrons, and electrons, the element no longer exists. Wow, you are acing this. We're halfway done. The Earth's outer layer is divided into sections called plates. These plates essentially float around on the mantle of the Earth. If two continent boundaries collide with one another, the Earth's crust is pushed together. 
Which of the following best describes the result of the collision? Ooh, a tricky one. Think of our discussion on constructive versus destructive processes. Which would this be? The correct answer is A. When two plates collide, one plate typically sinks beneath the other. If most of the crust remains, a mountain range can form. Last question. Which organelle is responsible for breaking down glucose into energy for the cell? Think of our factory. Where would the energy come from? The answer is B, the powerhouse. The mitochondria are responsible for breaking down glucose for energy. And that's the end. If the mitochondria are the powerhouse of the cell, then you're the powerhouse of those questions. I think you're ready to tackle subtest three of your FTCE elementary education K through six exam. Congratulations on finishing the video. If you found it helpful, give it a like. There's still plenty more to learn. Did you know that our study guide has hundreds of practice questions? If you really wanna make sure you're prepared for the FTCE elementary education K through six, subtest three, science, take the next step and subscribe to the 240 study guide. It has hours of videos so that you can watch and or listen while doing chores. It's test aligned so you know precisely what you need to study. And it has hundreds of practice questions so you can be sure you're ready. And it has the money back guarantee. So click the link below right now to get started.